hand of praise to the next to the speaker minister Stephanie Baker to declare your word before your people. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And all of God's children said amen. It is such an honor for me to be here this morning to celebrate the class of 2021. I too can remember sitting in your shoes and so God is good, he is faithful and I look forward to hearing about the wonderful things that he will do in your life. If you have your Bibles, please turn with me to John chapter 15, verse 1 through 5. John chapter 15, verses 1 through 5. I'll be reading from the NIV version. And the Bible says, I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself, but it must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in the vine, in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. For the graduates and for each and every one of us here today, for a brief while, I want to talk about without Jesus, you can do nothing. Perhaps many of you have become familiar with the term rolling blackouts. In fact, just last Sunday, I received a text message from PG&E telling me that because it was so hot, they were gonna do a rolling blackout in the area. And so to my surprise, you know, a rolling blackout is when they intentionally cut power for a certain period of time. 
So here I am sitting at home, had just finished celebrating my amazing father, because I'm a daddy's girl, celebrating my dad and my brothers. I get home, chill out, sitting down, and all of a sudden, everything goes dark. The electricity had been cut during one of these rolling blackouts. So I go to the TV and it was off. I go in the kitchen to look at the stove and the microwave, it was off. Every single item in the house that needed electricity was off. I'd become one of the thousands of people in the area affected by a rolling blackout. Now, while my electric devices were still connected to the power outlet, they were disconnected because the outlet that received power had been shut off from the power source. The manufacturer of these devices had strategically stated on the instrument that in order to use it properly, it had to be connected to power. God, who is our manufacturer, sets the stage for us, indicating that he created each and every one of us with a specific purpose, but making it very clear that that specific purpose can never be realized until it's connected to the right power. And so the text tells us today that unless we are connected to power, we live a life without power. And so here's Jesus in the text, here in John chapter 15. He's just got through washing the disciples' feet. He has identified Judas as his betrayer. And here he is, there is yet one more lesson that he wants them to learn as he's on his way to the cross. Graduates, you've done well. But there's yet one more lesson that God wants us to learn today as you go on your way. Jesus here challenges his disciples to know the source of their power as they go into life after he ascends to heaven. Jesus using this analogy of the vine and the branches teaches us the importance of abiding in him. If we want to operate in a life that is full of authority and power. And so the Bible tells us here in this verse, we see the word fruit mentioned many of times, multiple times, because God is indicating to us that he has purposed us in this life to be productive and fruitful. So if you notice in the text, the word fruit is repeated at least six times in the NIV. And so here in the location, can you just think about how this scene was? Jesus, they're in this garden. There are vines all around them, vines and branches and fruit on the vine. Imagine the scene. And here he is as he looks around, he begins to tell the story to these disciples using what is in front of them. And so the Bible tells us here in verse one, he looks and he says, I am the vine and my father is the gardener. Now the goal for the vine was to produce good quality fruit. And so Jesus used this, what is around them, to tell them that if you want to live a life on principle, a life that is abundant, you've got to know position. And so he sets up position here. He says, let me clarify the roles in this game. I am the vine. God is the gardener. He sets position because when we try to operate out of our position and authority, we end up in the wrong place. And so here he is clarifying positions. And then after he clarifies positions, look at verse two. He says, 
he cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes it so it can bear even more fruit. Jesus says God as the gardener has the power and the authority to identify branches or things connected to the vine that need to be cut off in order that that tree can live. What are you saying, Stephanie? Notice this that both of the, the branch and the vine are all connected to the same source. So I had to ask myself this question. How is it possible to have two branches be connected to the same vine and one bears fruit and the other one doesn't? Now, they're connected to the same vine. That vine is Jesus. But the Bible says that one bears fruit and the other one does not. And so I had to consult some tree experts because I don't know anything about that. And so according to the American Arbor experts on trees, listen very carefully about what they say. Don't ignore when you notice a dying branch that's connected to a living tree. Find the root cause of the problem before what it, whatever it is causes the rest of the tree to die as well. Think of the dying branch as a wake-up call to get some help that you need. What could be happening to the dying branch, you ask? An infestation has taken its life. Some infestations will stick to the branch and some infestations will kill you slowly. When there's a fungus on the branch, it has to be removed. And here's the last thing that these experts said. They said that even a dead branch can spread fungus to other branches connected to the tree. Sin is like a fungus. It will infest your life. And who knows that better than the gardener? Who knows that better than God? Because the Bible says, because he's fully aware of the danger of allowing sin and things that can help hinder you, from being connected to you, the Bible says that God as the gardener cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. The gardener understands that fruitless branches are only there to damage, hinder, and slowly destroy branches that have fruitful possibility. Sometime God's got to cut things off of your life. Sometimes God has got to put separation between you and the things in your life that are not fruitful. And though it may be painful to see some relationships go, to see some friends go, to see some family members go, God has strategically allowed it because he can't afford to not get the fruit he know he's placed in you. And it's okay when God cuts it off. Because the Bible declares that he's only done that because he sees you have fruitful possibility. And so the Bible says here that not only does God cut, it off, cut off these branches, listen very carefully, he says, every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes that it can bear more fruit, much fruit. Branches that show potential, he doesn't cut off, he prunes. Yes. Now pruning is an uncomfortable process, but pruning is a whole lot more productive than cutting something off. Yes. Now listen, people that are being pruned, they might scream, ouch, but guess what? They're a whole lot happier being pruned rather than cut off. Now, when you are being pruned, as I mentioned to you before, the pruning is not meant to kill you. The pruning is meant to give you life. 
when you go through situations that are uncomfortable, God is just pruning you. Why? Because he knows that if he prunes you, he can produce in you what he put in you. And so when God takes you through this pruning process, he knows that then he can reap the glory of his harvest within you. And so how does God prune us? He prunes us with his word. The Bible teaches us that the word of God, it cleanses us, it purifies us, it keeps us. Have you ever gone to sleep or tried to go to sleep and you just pulled up your Bible and the word of God began to comfort you? God has a way with words and his words not only have power, his words can clean us and prune us at the same time. Time. And so look at verse three. He says, you are already clean because of the words I have spoken to you. God has already begun the cleansing process with his disciples by pouring the word of God into them. He's telling them, I'm pouring this word into you because I can't afford to have you as a branch on the vine that's not producing fruit. The word of God is necessary. It is necessary to de dive down into the word of God because God has to keep us in a position of repentance so that sin can't infest our lives keeping us from being everything he manufactured us to be and so he says you are clean now very specifically he says by the words that I have spoken to you graduates in this season you can't afford to have the wrong people speaking to you he says, you're clean by the words I have spoken. You can't afford to have people telling you wrong things about what they think God wants you to do because their words can send you in a direction that takes you away from God's plan for your life. The words that Jesus speaks to his disciples not only cleanses them, it provides them with direction. And this is what I love about this text. Jesus declares that if you want to live a fruitful and abundant life, this is a 100% guarantee. Now let's stop and think about that. Think about where you are in your life. Think about what you want to do. Jesus is getting ready to tell us this is a 100% guarantee on how the Christian lives an abundant and fruitful life. Look at the text. Verse 4 says, remain in me and I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. Our education is important, but our education cannot do anything for us if it's not with the right power. So God tells us if we remain in him, the life that we're trying to live, the wives, the husbands, the children, the, the preachers, the teachers, all that we're trying to be. He says, if you remain in me, here's the guarantee. Your work will be fruitful. If you remember that I'm the one that created you, I'm the manufacturer of your life, I know how you're supposed to function. And if you remain in me, if you stay connected to power, you will get the full benefits of what I created you to be. If we remain connected to Jesus, there's no need to worry that someone will step into our place. There's no need to worry that there's not enough work for the harvest or harvesters for the work. There's no need to worry that someone will take my spot. The only spot you've got to have is a spot on the vine. And if you stay connected to the vine, God will take care of the spot. The Bible says in 1 John 2 and 6, whoever claims to abide in him must walk as Jesus walked. 
There will be things that come into your life that will feel uncomfortable. You'll be unsure. God, I'm praying, I'm praying. I have no answer. I don't know what to do. I love my uncle, Pastor Alan Turner. God rest his soul. He would say, if you don't know what to do, don't do nothing. Let me tell you something. It's okay to be in a position of nothing because when we're in a position of nothing, God is in a position of something. And when God is doing nothing, he's doing something. So we don't have to worry about the nothing. Just praise God for the something that God is doing in the nothing. And the Bible says, the Bible says, do you want to produce much fruit? or some fruit. I declare today that you will produce much fruit in the name of Jesus. And so here we have it. Jesus says it's a hundred percent guarantee for you to succeed if you stay in the vine because I stayed in God and I was 100% successful. Look at what the Bible says in John 5, 19. Jesus gave this answer. Very truly, I tell you, the son can do nothing by himself. He can only do what he sees the father doing because whatever the father does, the son does also. John 5 and 30, by myself, I can do nothing. John 8, 28, so Jesus said, when, he, when you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am he and that I do nothing on my own, but I speak just what the Father has taught me. Jesus Christ, the Son of God says, I can do nothing without God, and he explicitly says to us this morning, you can do nothing without me. Jesus operated in the Father, we operate in Jesus. And when we do it in our rightful position, you will not only have success, you will enjoy a fruitful and abundant life. And so here Jesus tells us these words. He tells us that you can't, he could not afford to listen to the wrong voices. Think about this for a moment. If Jesus had have listened to the wrong voice, he would have never made it to the cross. Satan tried to tell him, you know, you need to go this way, do this. And in Matthew chapter four, when he's tempting him, Jesus had to repeat the word back, right? If Jesus had have listened to the wrong voices, he would have never got to the cross. And can you imagine how detrimental that would have been if Jesus had not have gotten to the cross? You know how he got there? He listened to one voice. You cannot afford not to listen to Jesus Christ. Because if you listen to the wrong voice, it will cause you to veer off of the path that God wants you on and then you might miss or delay your specific purpose. Jesus here tells us, stay connected to the vine. Well, as I close, I had to think about for a second things that the vine must go through. Being connected to Jesus does not guarantee that we will have a comfortable life. Being connected to the vine does not guarantee that it's not going to be hard. It doesn't mean that the storms aren't going to come. It doesn't mean that the diagnosis are not going to come. But being connected to the vine means that even when you're going through, you're not alone. Listen to what happens to the vine. The vine, when it's hot outside, the vine and the branches, the branches feel the, the heat of the sun. Sometimes the branches are right in the sun. When you drive up to Napa and down the valley, you see the branches. There's no covering over the branches. Everything is, is exposed to the sun when it's raining outside and the water is beginning to fall. There's nothing that protects the, the, the branches from the water. The storms come, the lightning come, the, the branches are still connected to the vine, but here's the good thing about it. Even 
in the midst of the storm, the branch is not alone. The branch is connected to the vine. And when the storms come, when the heat is blazing down, not only is it blazing down on the branch, it's blazing down on the vine. And as long as I stay connected to the vine, we understand that water comes up. The source of power comes up. So even when the sins of life or the things of life may dry us up, the vine is still connected to power. The water comes up. It gets into the branch. And the branch has life even in the midst of the storm because in the storm, the branch is still in the vine. Hey! Hallelujah, Jesus. Stay connected to the vine. Don't worry about figuring out your major. Don't worry about figuring out your next, what you're going to do. God says, remain in me. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven. And all of these things shall be added unto you. If you trust in me and let my words abide in you, you can speak to this mountain and it shall be removed. Whatever you ask in my name, I shall do it. If you trust in me and never doubt, I will surely bring you out in the storm. I'm covered in the rain. I'm covered in the sun. I'm covered when I rise. I'm covered. Yeah. I wish I had some covered people in the house today. That would say if you stay in Jesus. don't have just be thankful of who you have might not have the money might not have the cars but one thing I have I've got Jesus and that's enough Anybody got Jesus in the house? Anybody got Jesus today? Can't you look up to heaven and say, God, if I don't hold on to nothing else, I'm holding on to you. I'm gonna stay in the vine because I need the vine. I need the vine. You need the vine. We need the vine. Yes, 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 amen, amen, amen. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. We thank God for that wonderful message. But we dare not leave this place today assuming that everyone has accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Minister Baker reminds us that we are not alone, that Christ is with us always. We only need to stay connected to the power source which is our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
Because you know, he loves us with a compassionate love, an everlasting love, a love that runs deep. God knew that in our humanness that we would fall, but he loves us so much that he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our sins. It is God's grace through Jesus Christ that we have eternal life. So today, it is God's desire that everyone accepts the gift of salvation. It is his desire that we have a personal and an intimate relationship with him. So we stand, I stand this morning as God's representative to invite you into the kingdom. And so if you have never said yes to God, you have never accepted Christ into your heart, we invite you now to accept him as your Lord and Savior. And secondly, if you are without a church home and you desire to join with us here at a Bible teaching, Bible preaching church at First Baptist Church Pittsburgh, we would love to have you. So we invite you to come and join with us. And this, if this is your desire, we ask that you access our website at www.fbchurch.org and follow the instructions there and we will contact you uh, for further information. God is an awesome God. We in our limited vocabulary can't find enough words, can't even find the words to say that will convey how much we love him, how magnificent he is. But God knows the desires of our heart. Let us pray. God, we thank you for the word that has gone forth today. We thank you, oh God, for your messenger in Minister Stephanie Baker. Lord God, we pray that hearts and minds were opened, oh God. We pray, God, that you help us to stay connected to you. We pray, oh God, that you continue to wrap your loving arms around us, that we continue to, Lord God, to seek you with our whole hearts. And so we say now and confess now, declaring, God, that we love you with our whole hearts. Lord God, and we will honor you and glorify you forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Give God a hand of praise today. Thank you for attending First Baptist Church online worship service. We pray that you were blessed by the preached word. If you have been led to support this ministry, there are multiple ways to do so. By phone, text the dollar amount and fund name to 925-232-4426. You can also visit our website, www.fbpittsburgh.org and click the Give Online button to submit your secure donation. Or you can give using our mobile app. 
You can download the app by visiting the Apple or Google Play Store. Search FBC Pittsburgh, and once you have downloaded the app, click on the Give Online option to process your secure donation. We thank you in advance, and may God bless you richly.